During our 12 days of road trip through the Deccan Plateau, Gandhi Kota is one of the best places that we visited. The gorge viewpoint with Penna River stretching and cutting right through the towering red rocks surpassed our expectations. During sunset, the faint orange light of the setting sun from behind enhanced the beauty of the rocks on both sides with the river flowing deep in between. Next day morning we hurried to experience the sunrise and what an experience it was. The sun rises right over the canyon, almost where the river narrows down to enter the gorge. It was time for us to start for our next destination. So before checking out we explored the resort a bit more. Oh, but you come here, much can be. Our journey continued through the roads of the Deccan Plateau. The Deccan Plateau almost extends over the entire triangular stretch of the Indian Peninsula. It is located south of the Narmada River between the western and the eastern Ghats. It rises at a height between 1000 to 2500 feet above sea level and gradually slopes from west to the east. Deccan is actually an English or an anglicized form of the Indian Sanskrit word Dakshin, which means south direction. The experience that we gathered during our 12 days of road trip was unique. It cannot be felt using public transport such as trains or flights. It was as if we were seeing the real India, travelling through its different landscapes, stopping over at unknown places, waiting for the herd of cattle to cross the road. Of course, one needs time and patience to enjoy this bliss. <laughs> Travelling through the vast stretches of the state highways of Andhra Pradesh, we arrived at Tadipatri, where we stopped over for a few hours to pay a visit to the magnificent temples of the 15th centuries. There are two main temples here, the Chintala Venkata Ramana Swami Temple and the Bugga Ramalingeshwara Swami Temple, both built more than 500 years back. There was a huge rush in both the temples that day due to Moksha Ekadashi also known as Gita Jayanti, considered to be the period when Lord Krishna delivered the message of Gita to Arjun. Due to the huge rush, we were able to enter only one temple, the Bugga Rama Lingeshwara Swami Temple. This is a Shiva temple where Shiva is referred to as Swayambhu or self-originating. The temple is located on the banks of the Penna River. It was built in the 15th century AD by the Pemmasani Nayaka ruler Rama Linga Naidu who ruled over this region as a chieftain under the Vijayanagara Empire. The entire temple is a visual treat for even a layman. Anybody can see how richly carved the walls and pillars of the temple are. The scenes from the Shiva Purana decorate the walls of the temple. Shiva in his different forms spreads across the walls of the temple. Numerous episodes of the Ramayana and the Mahabharata can also be found all around the temple walls. The temple architecture is highly similar to the Vijayanagara style of architecture.
This temple has seven musical pillars in front of the Vishnu shrine, which, when struck in a row, produces the swapta sur or the seven musical notes. I could not locate even a single portion of the temple without exquisite carvings. The awesomeness of Indian temples can amaze anybody. Such perfection in artistry is beyond our imagination. Everyone should visit some of these wonders at least once in their lifetime. We continued our onward journey towards the next destination, Anantapur. It took us an hour and a half to reach Anantapur from Tadipatri. We checked in at Hotel Club Ruru, which is located right beside the National Highway 44. Anantapur is a city in the state of Andhra Pradesh. In the evening, we went to visit the Iskon Temple, which was just a few minutes' drive from our hotel and also located beside National Highway 44. Radha Partha Sarathi Temple was built by the International Society for Krishna Consciousness ISKCON, in Anantapur in the year 2008. This entire temple is built in the form of a chariot drawn by four horses. Lord Krishna is also known as Partha Sarathi as Partha is another name of Arjuna and Krishna was Arjuna's charioteer or Sarathi during the Kurukshetra war. The idols of Radha and Krishna are placed inside the sanctum of the temple. While driving back to our hotel, the Iskon temple looked bright and impressive and stood out against the darkness. We came back to the hotel and after a long day it was time to retire. 
the following day we would be starting for Ballari located in the state of Karnataka which is famous for the historical Ballari fort ruled by the Nayakas at one time and then by Tipu Sultan. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe to our channel to get regular updates about our new travel videos. Thank <laughs> you.